Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Sorry it's been a while since the last video, but in the middle of uh, summer workouts and taking over a new program and getting things kind of organized and getting things set, so been a little bit busy, but I uh, wanted to get back, back at it a little bit. We're about three weeks away from camp. I know everybody else is getting closer to camp, so I wanted to get back at a couple things. Uh, talk about something that uh, received some, uh, some emails and some messages about it. Uh, a little while back last year sometime or the year before maybe did uh, we did a blog talking about uh, multiple blitzes and, and changing uh, changing your looks and blitzes and so I got an email from somebody that, that wanted me to further uh, talk about how to make a blitz look multiple and what makes it look multiple and so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about using one blitzing path but making the blitz multiple by changing the coverage and the looks behind it all right so what you have to understand is, from an offensive perspective, when you're looking at blitzes, the first thing you're looking at is the track of the blitzes. So you're figuring out, is it you know, an inside double-A gap pressure? Is it edge pressure? Is it the mic or the will or the mic and the will? Is it the mic and the Sam? Is it America's field blitz? you got to figure out the blitz that you're getting first, but then it's also important that you figure out the coverage behind it so that when you're game planning and you're thinking about how to protect yourselves against certain blitzes and what formations do they blitz? Do they blitz out of even or odd? Are they a first down blitz team? Are they a third down blitz team? What do they like to do on short yardage inside the red zone? When you're looking at those things, you're looking at how the other team blitzes, what blitzes they like to use, and then the things that you like in those situations. So as a defense, I think one of the ways you can help yourself look multiple is you can keep a blitz the same with the path and the track, which means the guys involved in the blitz can get good at that blitz because you're keeping the tracks the same and then behind it it takes a little bit more work but behind it you can play three variations of coverage which will then change what the offense needs to do to that blitz so if you have a certain blitz that you're going to run and it's a three under three deep blitz if the offense or the opponent the coaches see that on film they're going to have certain runs or passes they might like against that three deep three under blitz when they see that blitz, now they have to understand, are they going to call a play or are they going to, you know, are they going to think about the blitz path or are they going to think about the coverage behind the blitz? So now when you set that track up, they might look at it from, let's say, a pass protection standpoint and say, okay, are we protected against that blitz? Which way are we going to turn the center? Can the back pick it up? Is it hot for the quarterback? All right, that's the first part of it. But then by, beyond that, they've got to be thinking about either the route combinations or you know, if it's in, if it is the run game, they got to think about force players or how they're going to block it. So what you can do to become a little bit more multiple is use the same track and change the coverage behind it. All right. So it takes a little bit of work on the back end, but if it's this, if you're working with the same six players in coverage on the back end of one particular blitz, well then I think it's it's definitely feasible to teach them how to play two or three coverages behind that blitz. All right. So. First thing you always do is you put that blitz in and you put it in with what you like. All right, so let's say that we're going to talk right now. We're going to talk about a mic edge pressure. All right, and what we like to do is we like to send the mic off the edge while running our twist game inside with the three and the strong side five, two gapping inside. It gives us a two man game here with the mic coming off the edge. All right, I think it for, you know, it's going to force teams hopefully in the passing game if they turn the center that way, you'd like to run this blitz. Away from the side, they turn the center. It's probably better against a man side. But I really like it to cancel out those three gaps in the run game. Okay? If they turn the center that way, all right, they're going to be able to pick it up. But it's still their three linemen against my three defensive players. And if I create three one-on-one -on -one matchups, if they turn the center to the blitz and they put the back away, if I create three one-on-one -on -one matchups, I'm hoping that one of my guys can win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. All right, so I don't think you necessarily design a blitz all the time to say, hey, they can't block it. Who's always going to come free? The other team has coaches too. And if it's, if it's good football in the area you coach in, you've got to assume that they can block your blitzes. So we're going to try and get one-on-one -on -one matchups, but what we're really going to do is we're going to try and muddy the water a little bit in the run game, make sure we've got front side ABC taken care of from where the blitz is coming from, and then the diversity is going to come from behind it. All right, so... First thing we're going to look at is running this blitz with three under three deep. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop the weak safety down here, okay, and he's going to become your two seam or your seam curl flat play or whatever you're more comfortable teaching, okay. Two seam, seam curl flat, okay. This is going to be your 
three drop middle hole guy. All right, so your will linebacker is going to be your three drop middle hole guy. All right, you're going to spin your free safety. All right, he's going to be your deep middle of the field third player. All right, and then out here you're going to have guys. You can teach it as a regular third. You can teach it as a hot third. All right. For right now, we'll just call it a hot third. All right. And basically, we're going to tell that guy to play a deep third. We're adding an extra guy into the pressure. Ball's not going to come out as hot as it would as a six-man pressure. Okay. So you know, actually, let's just tell, let's just tell him that he's going to play a regular deep third. Okay. And. Since I'm only sending five, I'm going to tell them you're deep third, not hot third. I want you to play a regular third, and I want you to midpoint two verticals, okay? And I want the free safety to play a regular deep third. I'm going to be three under, two seam, seam curl flat, middle hole, three drop, two seam curl flat, two seam. All right, your, your two seam players are most likely going to be your force players in the defense. So you've created an eight-man front, all right, with three under, three deep, okay? You've got two seams covered. You've got the wheel drop into where three is, middle hole three drop, all right? If you want to uh, pattern match it and two to the flat, you can play like Rip Liz uh, match. You can play, you can match two to the flat with the seam curl flat player, all totally up to you, all right? I don't think there is a right way or a wrong way. I don't think there is a necessarily best way or a worst way. I think it's whatever you think your kids can do best to take away what other teams try to do to you, all right? If other teams are going to abuse you to the flat in the splits because you just kind of spot drop it or seam drop and you don't really match those routes, well then maybe if you play teams that can do that, you need to be able to match these. And if two goes to the flat, I need to match it. All right. As long as you teach it consistent to the way you want it taught and your kids understand the weaknesses of each concept, all right, and then maybe you have an answer behind it, which I'll go to next, all right, I think you're okay. All right. So... We're going to teach it more as, uh, probably more as a spot drop, seam curl flat, take away the seams first, rally to the balls in the flat late. Sometimes we'll press the corners to kind of take away that look of, of maybe always getting, um, you know, an easy throw in the flat. All right? Multiple things you can do to change that. Keep your blitz track the same. All right? Start it off with three under, three deep. Mike Edge pressure with your twist game on the front side with the three and the five. Okay? Now, for argument's sake, you're getting beat to the flat, you're getting beat with quick game, okay? Run the same pressure, all right? Run the same exact pressure here. So run Mike Edge, okay? And now run Mike Edge and run it with a Four under two deep hot concept. Okay? So now run your same pressure, run Mike Edge so that your guys up front can run the same pressure. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave your corners in the flat. Alright, so you're gonna have your corners playing however you want them to play flat. They can play they can play kind of funnel hard inside. You can get them up and press funnel, okay? You can play them hard press funnel. You can play them in like a trap technique from slightly off. It doesn't matter, they're gonna be the flat players, however you want to teach it, however you want to play it. Okay, you're then going to take the strong safety and you're going to make him more of a hook curl player. You're going to take the will linebacker. You're going to make him more of a hook curl player. Okay, and you're going to try and drop them inside those routes of that number two so the number two can't run that look in, that quick hook, that spot, whatever it may be. You're going to try and keep them inside the routes of that number two and then you're going to take your safeties and you're going to play your safeties off the deep half. Okay, now you're going to take your safeties and you're going to play them off the deep path. Really good versus two by two. There's not a real threat of three vertical. Three vertical would have to come from the backfield out, so maybe your hook player might have to be aware of possibly matching or carrying three vertical. All right, but in two by two, I like the pressure a lot. It's balanced. It takes away the immediate flat game. If they see blitz coming and they think they're going to get three under three deep, all right, and now all of a sudden you get more of a two trap look. Corners don't bail to the third. They try and throw bubble, hitch, whatever it is, your corner's sitting in the flat. Inside guys try to take away the quick look-ins to two. 
All right, we should have the bubble to two taken care of. We should, if we funnel or hard force the one inside, all right, we should be able to help the safeties on two verticals to that side, all right. Should be decent in the run game. We really have an old traditional nine-man front, all right, with the two deep concepts. So any perimeter runs, all right, if your corners can get involved. If the ball's on the hash mark in high school, it's a little bit tougher, but you still have your perimeter guys. These are forced flat defenders and two deep, all right, so they're still D-gap run players. Should be good against the run game, should be good against speed option or anything going to the perimeter, all right? Should be decent against jets or anything going wide because your corners are no longer bailing, they're sitting, all right? And they're now playing some type of force flat funnel, too deep, all right? Trap, whatever, play it however you want. You can play too deep a lot of different ways. All you're doing is you're playing now four, one, two, three, four under, too deep. All right, so just like three under, three deep, there's a lot of vacated zones in here, but you're sending a fifth guy, so they have to know the vacated zones, and they have to be able to handle the fifth guy coming to get the ball off. Now, the other difference is four under, two deep, as opposed to three under, three deep, changes exactly where the vacated areas are. So now when that team sees the Mike Edge pressure, and they think maybe they can get the ball out to the flat quickly, all right, because your corners bail and it's three under, three deep, now all of a sudden the same Mike Edge is four under, two deep. So you diversified your coverage while keeping the blitz track the same. Okay, you diversified the coverage and you kept the blitz track the same. So you went from three under, three deep to four under, two deep. Okay, the last thing you can do, all right, is you keep the same, keep the same track, Mike Edge, all right, Especially for us, we're a 4-2-5 team, so it gives us the matchups we want. All right. Now you can go Mike Edge, and we're going to go Mike Edge one free. So now we're going to go man on one, man on two to your side, three to the other. Man on one, man on two to your side, three to the other. Man to back wherever he goes. Okay. If it's empty personnel and it's still a back involved, I want my will linebacker covering the back. If they get out to completely empty, okay, you either got to feel like your will can cover their worst receiver or maybe you check out of the blitz. That's a game plan thing up to you. Our free safety is going to rotate, all right, to be the deep middle player. So now I've got the same blitz, which my guys can execute effectively off the edge. I've got man free now, so now if they want to throw any of the routes they thought might have been good against three under three deep or four under two deep, are they good against man? I've got a deep post player in the middle that can help me with the long ball, or if I'm weaker in the run game, if they got me spread out in two by two, all right, and they get me blocked up with maybe their five, some type of read game where their five can handle my six, and they hit me with the run game, I got an eraser in the middle of the field, so it's not zero, all right, so I've got man free now. All right, and effectively what, what you what you got to look at is we've gone Mike Edge and we've gone Mike Edge three under three deep, we've gone Mike Edge four under two deep, and we've gone Mike Edge man free. So with that Mike Edge pressure, we've got three coverages behind it. Three under three, four, or three over three, two over four, all right, man free. Three under three deep, four under two deep, man free. The lingo, all right, football's a crazy game. The lingo changes. It's all the same crap. Three under three, three over three. Four under two, two over four. Same thing. Man free, one free. Man free is man free. It is what it is. Edge pressure, same five guys executing the same stunt. We've changed the back edge of the coverage, all right, the back end of the coverage. So now the quarterback, the offensive coordinator, receivers, other guys, when that Mike Edge comes, you don't know that you got – you might have that one or two play calls you love against the Mike Edge pressure. You don't know what the coverage is, so you've got to now match the Mike Edge pressure with the right coverage to hopefully get you in the right play. Okay? Just a way to diversify a blitz by not changing the blitz. Sometimes guys like to think that you can draw up a million blitzes on paper. They're all good, but can your kids run all those? If you draw up one blitz and teach coverages behind the blitz, now you've got multiplicity within that blitz. So I think to me... I'd rather teach the coverage on the back end. If I can't play all those coverages, then I'm going to play one thing and play it as fast as I possibly can. That's the nature of what we want to teach. That's the nature of, of why we started, you know, I started the website, Play Fast Football. Teach the blitz with one coverage, play fast, play hard.
Be responsible. All right, have your kids understand they know what's going on. You can't beat me because I'm messed up. You got to physically beat me. Okay. As you get better at playing fast and you educate your population playing football, now I can play fast and multiple. So now I can use this blitz with two coverages behind it. All right. Once I get good, I might be able to play three coverages behind it. But to me, I'd rather start with the blitz and a coverage, and then as my kids get better or older, change the coverage behind the blitz, but let the guys going after the quarterback do the same thing. It's kind of like on offense. I like to change what my skills do, but not what my line does. So I might run power seven different ways. My whole line blocks it the same way every time. Same thing with the blitz track. I want the big boys in the blitzer being aggressive and not thinking about the track. So I want them going and understanding that track and what they need to look at and certain schemes that are going to give us problems. And I want them to run that track hard. So I'll change the coverage behind it. Okay. Now, another way you can do that, all right, kind of in vogue right now, six-man deals. All right. So I'll draw up the one that everybody's running, everybody uses right now, especially even teams. Double edge, A gap pressure. Okay? Double edge, A gap pressure. Talked about this on some other blogs. All right, we've talked about this a little bit. We're talking about double edge crossfire, okay? Double edge crossfire blitzes. So now we're looking at, okay? I'm sorry, not double edge, double A gap. Now we're looking at double A gap pressure. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with double A gap pressure, okay, and we're going to start off with double A gap pressure, and we're going to start in zero behind it, okay. So we're going to go double A gap pressure, and we're going to go man on one, man on two to your side, three away, man on two to your side, three away, man on one, all right, man on that running back. So now we're going double edge pressure, wide jet ends. A gap crossfire, double A gap. All right, sorry, I keep saying edge because we just came from Mike Edge. All right, been a while, haven't done some videos, a little bit rusty. Double A gap crossfire pressure, man to man, zero behind it. Okay, so now when they see that double A gap, they think they're getting zero. They got to draw plays up that they like against zero coverage, right? Okay, let's change that up now. Okay, and we'll go double A gap. Crossfire, and we'll go hot 3D. All right, so now we're going to go hot third, which now I'm telling that corner, eyes on the QB. Still might have the midpoint two verticals, but we're going to play off the intentions of the QB. I'm sending six. That ball's coming out of his hand. All right. He's going to play a deep middle of the field, but he's also going to play it off the quarterback. All right. These guys are going to play what's called vision and break, all right, vision and break. So what they're going to do is they're going to bounce, they're going to read the intentions of the quarterback in the backfield. If the quarterback looks away, they're going to, if whatever way the quarterback looks, I'm going to melt, his front hand comes off the ball, I'm going to turn and break, okay? So if the quarterback's eyes were looking this way, he would melt this way, he would melt this way. If his hand comes off the ball, we would then break hard in that direction. All right, tough to describe in a video on a board. You'd have to see it live to actually understand it better. All right, but it's a six-man pressure deal with five back-end players that are actually playing off the intentions of the quarterback. You're telling them it's okay to look in the backfield. It's okay to read off what the QB does, all right, because the ball is going to come out of that hand quicker. So we're expecting with six-man pressure the ball to come out of his hand quicker. All right, so when you do that, it's a little bit different than three under three deep. It's a little bit more aggressive. We actually teach our guys to play off the quarterback, which we don't always do in, in standard three deep stuff. We're not just a true quarterback read. We actually don't like our guys staring at the quarterback when we're playing some pattern read or pattern match stuff in our base defense. So this is a little bit different for us because we want our guys to actually play off the intentions of the quarterback. Double A gap crossfire, vision break, vision break, hot thirds. Is it good versus everything? No. All right. Three by one, I think, gives it some issues. Two by two, and they pick up the blitz, I think, gives it issues. It's good to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. It's good to get them, all right, to kind of see a double blitz coming and throw maybe some zero beaters into zone coverage. I think if you do it right, it should be great against the run game because it's an eight-man front and guys playing with zone eyes, not man eyes. 
So I think it should be really good against the run game. Have I been hurt in the run game with those pressures? Yes, I have. It's not a perfect world. All right? On paper, it should be great against inside runs. You should be okay against outside runs because you're going to play your ends in jet as jet guys. Is it great versus two-back tight end stuff? Maybe not. It should be solid. It's good against the two-back passing game because there's not as much width, not as much space. So I think it's real good against two-back passing game. Maybe two-back hard runs can beat you up a little bit. All right, maybe you don't want to use it in that scenario. So you've got double A gap crossfire, zero. Double A gap crossfire, vision and break. Okay. Last thing you can do, all right, last thing you can do is you can also go double A gap crossfire, man free. All right, how do you do that? You play man on one, you play man on two to your side, three away. You play man on one, you play man on two to your side, three away, and you play your ends as peel, which means they are going to take in coverage, all right? They are going to take in coverage any back that crosses their face outside wide. So if this back were to swing, this end is going to have to take him in coverage. You're going to put your free safety in the deep middle of the field. Okay? So now what you're going to do is you're going to play, all right, one free, and it's going to be a peel concept because you got your edge, your, your outside rushers responsible, all right, for any running back to the flat. Okay? So now what you've done is you've gone double A gap crossfire. You've gone with a man concept to the receivers. But now if they think maybe they can just leak the back out, like some teams might look at this and say, okay, if we were in, in vision and break hot and we ran flare with no peel, if they block the vision and break in the corner, there's nobody to take the running back on paper. I could see that. Now when they flare that back, I'm going to peel this edge to cover them. I'm going to be in man-to-man, -man, which changes all the route concepts. The things that might have been there before might not be there now. Now they might have to run some rubs or picks or crossing routes. All right, they can't just run some things that might have been there against the, the zone coverage. So now I've got a man concept, my ends are going to peel, and I've got a deep middle of the field player again. Why is it good to have him there? Long ball, any runs that break, he can be an eraser. So now you don't always have to be in that all guns blazing zero mode when you run a double crossfire inside blitz and send six. All right, now you don't always have to be, hey, it's their band playing or our band playing, it's a hit or miss type deal. No, it doesn't have to be. You, if you like the track of that blitz and you like that double crossfire, you can send six and play zero and, and be a gambler. You can send six and play hot behind it and be safer. Or you can send six and peel with the middle of the field open. Now you're going to say, coach, if the back gets out, you're not really sending six. Yeah, on paper, I understand that. But when that quarterback takes the snap and he sees Mike and Will crossfire, he thinks he's getting six. So if I don't peel that end every time, that quarterback has 1.3 seconds to figure out whether it's peel or not. Is it five or six coming? And then the old line's got to decipher that. Hey, if they're going to peel, can that tackle turn the whole thing inside and slide it one way because they're going to peel the end? All right, if they do that and that end doesn't peel, he's going to hit the quarterback. All right, so they don't know whether we're peeling or not because we don't do it all the time. So now you've got double A gap crossfire. And behind it, You've got zero, okay, you've got hot third, and you've got one free peel. So you've got one blitz track, double A crossfire, okay, one blitz track, running it, executing it, hard jet ends wide up the field, okay, you're aggressive in your blitz track and you've changed the coverage behind it to where you've got a straight man coverage, a zone type coverage, all right, with vacated areas that they can find, and then you've got a man-free concept. So you've given them double A gap pressure with three three looks behind it. All right, you're making yourself multiple by using the same blitz. So now when they see that on film, every time they see double crossfire, it's not zero. So now they got to look. All right, hey, double crossfire, but it's not zero. It's hot thirds. Hey, double crossfire, but the end just ran with the back. So now they got to figure out how you're going to play all those things. All right and you're running the same blitz, you're just tweaking the back end of it. All right, so that's 
my opinion and my version of how you can tweak blitzes by using the same pass. You can change the coverage behind the blitz. All right? Two schools of thought. Have blitzes that come from all over the place, and the other team has to pick them up and work on picking up, you know, like the 3-3 stack mentality where you can send four, five, or six from 100 different ways. Yes, you can. All right? But I think, to me, it's a lot to work on with your kids. Or you can have three, three blitzes or four blitzes that you like and manipulate, manipulate the coverage behind that, and now you've got multiple blitzes. Okay? So... This was a question to ask to me about how you can be multiple behind your blitz package. All right. Always, guys, there's other answers out there. There's a lot of great football minds. There's minds that are way better than I am on defense or on offense. This is my suggestion of how you can be multiple and how I would choose to be multiple using the same blitz, same path, different coverage behind it. All right, guys, hopefully I'll do maybe two or three more of these before the season starts. As always, if you guys... Contact me at CoachMac8740 on Twitter, uh, Sting8740 at gmail.com, email, leave a comment on the YouTube videos. I'll try and get back to you the best I can. If you want to see something, leave a comment. If I like what the topic is, hopefully I can cover it on a video and hopefully I can help you out. All right, remember, you want your kids playing fast. You want to coach so that they can play fast. You don't play well until you play fast. See you next time.